Today, we'd like to talk about capacitors hooked up in series and parallel. So this will be multiple capacitors that are hooked together in one or both of these configurations. Capacitors have amazing properties. They're able to charge quickly. They're able to discharge quickly. They're able to um, last for long periods of time, but they also have some drawbacks. As we saw, we cannot exceed a certain voltage on our capacitor or we will damage the insulator and maybe ruin our capacitor. We also learned that capacitors can't store as much energy as batteries. So by hooking capacitors together in series and or parallel, we can overcome some of these limitations. So here are a few pictures of capacitors hooked together to other capacitors. We'll use these in things like rail guns, where we can create amazing amounts of current that we could never hope to do with batteries. And here is a large scale rail gun created by the Armed Forces of America to see whether or not this is actually going to be the weapon of the future. And again, you could see large numbers of capacitors that are going to be powering this. There's also thoughts that we can use capacitors hooked up in series and parallel in things like electric cars. We'd be able to charge them more rapidly and discharge them more rapidly when we want rapid acceleration. So although things may look like batteries, they just might be a bank of capacitors. Okay, so let's take a look at how this works. So we'll start with our single capacitor hooked to our battery, and we know that the charge stored is going to be the capacitance value multiplied by the voltage. Again, the limit here with voltage is if we make the voltage too high, a spark will jump through our capacitor, through the insulator of our capacitor, as we experience dielectric breakdown. Okay, so we're going to hook a couple capacitors in series with each other. And the first thing I'd like you to realize is that what happens here is charges from the battery are going to deposit only on the first capacitor. The charges that are pushed off the first capacitor will end up on the second capacitor, and those pushed off the second will end up on the third. So although it looks like we have three capacitors that are storing charge, they actually will all be storing the same amount of charge. And only the charge on capacitor one actually came from the battery. The charge on the other two capacitors came from the capacitors that were before them in the series circuit. So one property of a capacitor hookup in series is that the total charge is equal to charge one, which is equal to charge two, which is equal to charge three. You do not add your charges together to get your total. We're still gonna have voltage one, voltage two, and voltage three adding up to the voltage of the battery, which we've learned to write using our sigma notation. Okay, now we're going to hook our capacitors up in parallel, and you'll see this is quite different. Now charges from the battery will be deposited separately on all of the different capacitors. In essence, we have increased the area available to store charges. So this time, the charge that comes out of the battery will equal the sum of all the charges on all your capacitors. Because it's a parallel circuit, the voltage will now be the same on all the capacitors. They will all get the full voltage of the battery. So by hooking them up in parallel, we are able to get more total charge stored using our battery. Okay, so let's take a look at this circuit. Again, this is a series circuit where we have three different capacitors. You can see that they have different capacitance values, but that does not mean that they store different amounts of charge. 
we are going to have the same charge on every single one of these because the charge on the second one came from the first one and the charge on the third came from the second. So when we try to figure out the total capacitance, it turns out that we are not going to get a bigger number. We're going to get a smaller number than any of our individual capacitors. So we would say the voltage total, voltage one, voltage two, voltage three. They have to share the voltage of the battery. We know that for each one, charge equals CV. So if we solve for V, we get charge over capacitance. So we get the total charge over the total capacitance equals the charge on the first capacitor divided by capacitor one, same for two, and same for three. Since all the charges are the same, we can cancel them out and we get a formula for capacitors in series that looks a lot like the formula we had for resistors in parallel. So when you total up your capacitors in a series circuit, you're going to get less capacitance than you had originally. So what's the advantage to this? The advantage is that each capacitor gets less voltage than they would have got if they were individual. So this makes it less likely that they're going to experience dielectric breakdown. So figure out for me the total capacitance, the charge stored on each capacitor, the voltage on each capacitor, and then finally our total values. Okay, so because they are in series and because they're capacitors, you're going to find your total by doing the sum of your inverses. Notice that I left everything in microfarads. That means that when I do my math, my total capacitance will come out in microfarads. When you do this, you should get an answer that is less than 15. Just like we saw with resistors in parallel, we're always going to get a number that is smaller than our smallest number. In this case, you should get an answer of about 11.05 microfarads. To find out the total charge, you do the total capacitance times the voltage. And I'm going to leave my capacitance in micro. And by doing that, my answer will automatically be in microcoulombs. Once we have that, we know that that is the charge that we're going to get on the first capacitor, and it's the charge we're going to get on the second capacitor. So we can now do this formula two more times. So for capacitor one, we're going to have 66.3 micro. It's going to be 15 micro for the capacitor. And we solve for volts. Because we have micros on each side, they're going to cancel out. And we're going to get a voltage here of 4.42 volts. We then do the same thing for capacitor 2. And we get a number of about 1.58 volts. And we know we did it right because these voltages add up to six. So we have found the charge and the voltage for each of our capacitors. Capacitors in parallel are much easier because they all have the voltage of the battery. We just set voltage two and voltage one both equal to the voltage of the battery. When we do this, we're going to find that the total charge is equal to charge 1 plus charge 2 
we could use our capacitor times voltage formula. Kind of acts like Ohm's law. So I get rid of Q1 and Q2. And since they're all the same voltages, that will cancel out. And for parallel circuits, we see that we just add up our capacitors to get our total. So if you have these two capacitors, just add them together and that will get your total capacitance. Put all the voltage for each branch since it's parallel and you can easily find the charge on capacitor one and the charge on capacitor two. And to get the total that came out of the battery, you simply add those together. I'm not going to work through this. I think it should be simple enough that you should be able to do that on your own. So capacitors in parallel can store more charge and capacitors in series lower the voltage on each capacitor to make it less likely to have dielectric breakdown. All right, so in parallel again, everybody gets the same voltage and you can find the charge using our Q equals CV. Add up all the charges to get charge total. In series, you add them as you would have done resistors in parallel. You get your total charge from your total capacitance and your total voltage. And whatever charge you get for total will go for each of the individual capacitors. All right, so we're going to pause it there. Don't worry about doing the energy right now. I just want to make sure you get the big idea how series and parallel work a little differently than they did for resistors. And I also want you to get the big idea that we do this for two reasons. To store more charge and to make sure each individual capacitor does not exceed its breakdown voltage.